You are with another episode of Into the Nothing with your favorite host, Patrice Douglas. And on this episode, I have a beautiful friend of mine, Ashley, who is all the way over in Florida. And I'm coming to you live from Brisbane, Australia. It's currently 8 a.m. here and I am speaking to Ashley and it's 5 p.m. in Florida and She's on a weekend away with her mom, away from her daughter, just having some girly time. And she's currently drinking some, what she likes to call it, mom juice. Ashley? It's It's really old grapes. It's (laughs) fermented. We'll count it as part of the important food groups because it's technically a fruit. But it is 5 p.m. here. So, yes, I'm enjoying myself. I'm on vacation. (laughs) enjoy it's so perfect mom juice no judgment (laughs) (laughs) Ashley and I were just talking before we were before we um hit record and she was just like you know can I swear or like and I'm like this is just it is just an open forum my friend and so it's perfect because we were just yeah no (laughs) no we were just talking about um, authentic expression and it's a word and a phrase and authenticity is thrown around but I feel like in this conversation, we get to explore that, what that feels like for us and hopefully mission slip for you, whoever's listening, wherever you are to just unravel a little bit more of what feels true for you, whatever that looks like, be the courageous, curious, creative soul that you are and just follow what that is. And um, yeah, this conversation is something that I'm very excited to have because Ashley has recently launched, created, illustrated, she was the artist, author, the whole shebang behind this beautiful book called Little Miss Mismatched. And Ashley is a girl mum on a mission to spread kindness. And Ashley, you're so creative. Like I, I know this because when we've gone to Burning Man, which for everyone who's listening, I've got an episode completely dedicated to Burning Man. If you're not sure of what it is or if you've been and you just want to like sink your ears into and marinate into the vibes of Burning Man, I've got a whole episode dedicated to Burning Man. So go and have a listen. But I've been to Burning Man with Ashley and I've also seen pictures of you when I haven't gone. And this woman and her creativity, you just like, and also everyone go and check out her Instagram. You're just going to die when you see this woman. She's just so just beyond beautiful inside and out but you're so creative and 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 when I started to find out on social media that you're also like an artist and you can paint and I'm just like whoa girl so like I'm assuming since you were a little girl were you always painting and drawing yes yeah so it's been a long journey a long creative journey for me um I started painting when I was very young. My father, my biological father was an artist and musician. And um, I remember watching him do watercolor paintings when I was very, very small. So that was kind of like my first taste of art. And I, I've always had that like creative spirit in my soul. And I, I don't know if it's like nature versus nurture kind of thing, if it was like in my DNA, if it was because my father was very creative, but regardless, I've always had that drive to be very like expressive in the arts. And so it started when I was young and then, um, my, my parents separated and when they were separating, my mom put me through art therapy. And that was something that was really profound for me because I found so much healing within the art therapy program and like expressing my feelings through painting and drawing. I was very young and I, I just remember, um, you know, painting what I was feeling and it was a really good therapeutic process for me. And so I've been lucky enough that my, both my mom, my dad, and my stepdad later on in life have been very encouraging to me in pursuing the creative aspects of my life. And I, I have to give them a lot of credit, a lot of props for that. Um, And as I grew older, I would always take on extracurricular art classes, painting classes, portrait classes when I was really young. Um, And I also was very drawn to literature and reading and poetry and English was always my best subject in high school. The other ones were challenging for me. I struggled with ADD, which is a whole nother thing, um, you know, but I have always been drawn to 
expressing myself through words and through painting. And so I've always used that as a means to sort of deal with my feelings and my emotions and where I'm at. And um, yeah, it just kind of progressed. And I've always held on to that. And as time went on, I started doing different, you know, as I got older, I delved into many different creative projects and um, I would start different companies and had different ideas of what I wanted to do, but I never really had a direct idea and direction of where I wanted to go. And I went through a bit of a dark period in my life that sort of set me back a bit, um, dealing with, you know, having, having ADD that I never really took medication for, which medication is great for some people. It's wonderful. I've taken it. It, for me, it, I feel like it affects me as a person, my creativity. So I, I've tried to stay away from it. Um, I also moved out to Los Angeles. I lived in, born and raised in Tennessee, moved out to LA and um, worked in the film industry there for a while. I got my cosmetology license. I was doing production design, storyboarding. And during my time out there, I encountered some instances that were a bit traumatic and came out with diagnosed PTSD, um, codependency issues, uh, you know, the ADD thing. So I, for a long time, I always had this um, sort of anxiety about being creative and putting myself out there because I was so afraid of judgment. I was so afraid of failure, so afraid of failure. I was so afraid to create something, put my heart and soul into it and have people say something negative about it. You know, suffering with the... Um, anxiety, I had really bad social anxiety. I would always be afraid that people were saying bad things about me behind my back, just silly stuff. But it was all due to, you know, things that had probably happened in my past and I needed to overcome. So I had all these things kind of stacked against me, like anxiety, ADD, codependency, PTSD, like love universe is like, how many bricks can we stack against you in your creative process? Let's see how you can overcome them. Um, and it, it's been, it's been quite a journey for me. It's been um, a beautiful, painful, cathartic journey, trying to get to the point where I am now of being able to fully express my creativity and feel confident in that because for so long I blocked myself. I stopped myself. And I sold myself short because I, told myself and I felt that I wasn't good enough or I wasn't worthy. And I knew, I always knew like deep down inside that I could do it, but it was like those past experiences that were just putting those blockers up in front of me that was holding me back from doing it. <clears throat> and it took a lot of self-work you know, like a lot of um, therapy, huge proponent of therapy, EMDR, all the things. Um, and so, yeah, I finally got to a point where I was able to fully express myself and create this book. And it's, it's just, it's been a, it's been a long journey, but you know, it's been a beautiful one. And um, I, I don't know whoever's listening to this. I'm a huge proponent for mental health. If there's someone out there who, you know, feels like they're stuck and need help, I encourage you to reach out and at the least seek help from a friend or at the best um, do therapy because it was really therapy that pulled me out of the muck and mire and helped me overcome the biggest challenges. And it finally put me in a place where I have so much more clarity now and so much more confidence and like the person I was eight years ago compared to where I am now. It's like two different people. Yeah. Wow. Thank you so much for sharing that. I think so many, so many people can relate, whoever's listening. And I know that I can relate in my own way too. And um, what I can hear in this and it, it feels like there's so much sensitivity. I feel like with, you know, with being women, being female and um, you know, our hearts and, 
being creative. There's a real sensitivity that comes with that. And there's so much going on in this world from when we're little, when we're little and just like all the things that are constantly going on. And it's just like, it's just so overstimulating and it's, and there's so many things that you've experienced that I haven't, but yeah, it just, it's like this, this human body and this little soul is just like, what's going on. And I'd actually love to ask you a question um, about around ADD, like what, what does it feel like? And if you could describe it, I don't know if you can. Oh yeah. Um, oh yeah. Pictures. Yeah. Okay. I'm like, there are words for this. Um, but also what's, what do you think is the gift in having ADD and, and what's something that's just so challenging and fucked about it? Well, that's, yeah, it's a, that's a big question. So yeah. ADD has been, <laughs> Oh, Lord have mercy. It's been a struggle I have had for a long time. Mm -hmm. Since high school, I've struggled severely with staying focused. My brain is always in a million different directions. And the thing that people don't understand about ADD is that it's not a focus problem on everything. It's a focus problem on the mundane and like normal day-to-day -day tasks. So you can have ADD and be able, you can be hyper-creative and be able to focus on something that is interesting to you and is exciting. And you can have like a hyper-focused session on something, which is what I do. I will get in my creative zone. I will like hyper-focus on a project and I will just be like tunnel vision. But when it comes to like the day-to-day -day mundane tasks that are repetitive, that require just, you know, general overall energy to get things done, it is so hard to focus on. I struggle with it so much. And God bless my husband because he can, he can, he can talk to you about this too. He's witnessed my, my issues with ADD and he's been um, a huge help in like, helping me stay on target and stay focused, but it's a struggle. It's a daily struggle for me. I have, I have to have lists. I have to have notes. I put sticky notes on my forehead. I put, you know, I have to have them on my mirror. I have sticky notes everywhere. I'm using Trello. I'm like trying to use all the organizational things, but it's still at the end of the day, it is hard for me to focus on like, okay, I need to pay this bill and I need to send this email and I need to do this. But if I'm in my creative zone, I'm, I'm excited about it and I'm able to really focus. So it's always been a struggle for me. And it's something that has, um, yeah, reared its ugly head many, many times, but, you know, talking about the positives of ADD, that's an interesting aspect to speak about because, um, you know, again, it, you talk about this aspect of hyper-focusing, like I'm, I'm a very creative person. And when I am interested in something, I am like, full on there. I'm like locked in mm -hmm. and I can tell a difference. And like, I, I have taken medication for it before and I have, you know, I'm not on it now. Again, it's great for some people that I've, it's needed it's necessary. I think it's a wonderful thing in the right situation. Um, and at some point I'm always like teetering on the edge or some days I'm like, God damn it. I really need to get on. I really need something to help me <laughs> to focus just on the days that I'm not doing something creative. I really need some help. Um, and then there's other times when I'm like, eh, I don't know. I'm always like teetering on the edge of that. Um, but I think, yeah, the positive aspect of it is, is that I, it, it does allow me to be very focused in on um, what I'm interested in creatively. But when I do, I do notice when I am medicated, it, takes off a little bit of the creative energy that I have and it puts me in more of a um, linear methodical mind frame, you know. Mm, interesting. Yeah. Thanks so much for sharing that. Cause it's um yeah, I I I'm like, do I have it? I'm not sure. Like it's it's so fascinating. <laughs> Cause I I hear so many people share that they um, experience that or they've been they've been diagnosed. And yeah. so I feel like a lot of people listening would either have children or they might be themselves or they might be questioning and it's um and it's just like it's so common I just wonder anyway it's a different conversation for a different right. day but it just it yeah. sends my mind into some questions of like yeah, yeah. that's a, that's a whole other podcast girl <laughs> well, come back guys for part two yeah. no yeah. okay and upon that <laughs> yeah. so so let's talk about your book 
and how it came about because I know there's a really beautiful message in it and um, yeah you're an artist so you illustrated it you also wrote it and um, you know you've got a beautiful little daughter that I, I know that the illustrations are based on and she's just what, like what even is she is she real like <laughs> she's just so magnificent oh she's a little doll so yes yeah, so, so tell me about how like the process of the book and the and the creation and, and just whatever feels true for you to yeah. share yeah so um I've always kind of kept a journal. I've always just loved to free write, not for any purpose other than for my own just cathartic reasons. I love to write poems. Sometimes I like to write songs. Um, also have like an art journal. So I, I've always kind of had this ongoing um, writing project in my phone, I'll just be like inspired and decide to start writing something in the moment on my phone and my notes. And I don't know, there was one day um, the TV was on and I just heard the word mismatched. And in my head, I, I thought, miss mismatched. Oh, that that's a really cute idea. And I kind of just started going with it. And this is what happens in my creative process. Like if I see a fabric that's interesting or inspiring, it makes me then decide, okay, I know what to do with this piece of fabric. Or if I hear a word that's inspiring, it makes me want to write something. Or if I have an emotion that I feel, then I'm inspired to expound upon that. So it was the word that I heard and just like this burst of like creative energy, which I feel when, when I get in that creative state of flow, it comes from uh, some higher source. It, it comes from something much bigger than myself. And when I start kind of channeling that creative energy, it just, the words just kind of flowed. And I started writing the story about Little Miss Mismatched. And um, the theme of it was being authentic and true to yourself, which is something that I have always struggled with. And I'm continuing to learn this lesson. And I will always be working on this lesson to live as authentically as I can. And so I wrote this little story. I didn't think much about it. And um, I shared it with my husband and he said, you know what, you should, you should turn this into a book. And I was like, all right, you know, I like this idea. Let's, let's roll with this. Let's see where this goes. And so I decided to be up for the challenge. And again, like, you know, I, I'm notorious for starting projects and not finishing them. And so I didn't talk about it to anybody. I was like, mom's the word, because I don't want to be like, okay, this is my like 12th artistic project of the year that I don't know what's going to happen to it. So I didn't say anything to anyone until it was actually done. I maybe told like a few people about like just quickly about like, oh, I'm doing this little project, but I didn't announce it to the world. And so I decided to, um, I wanted it to be like watercolor paintings. I want to be very ethereal look to it and very bright and happy. And so I, I went online and I bought a, um, a sketch pad, a digital sketch pad. And I decided to learn how to use that as my medium, because normally I'm used to working on proper canvas with brushes and like feeling everything. And I was like, you know what, if I'm going to do this, I want to do it the right way because then I'm going to be able to edit things a little bit better as I go. And I'm so glad I did that because it's been such a game changer for me to be able to design on a computer and be able to edit and like pick up my case with me and travel. And I did most of the illustrations actually in Destin, Florida, which is not too far from here. I brought my laptop and my pad with me when we were on vacation and it happened to just be like raining most of the time. And I got a lot of the work done, but that was a really big for me that I learned how to um, do the watercolor paintings on the sketch pad with um, Photoshop and like the watercolor brushes and everything. So that was a really fun experience for me was learning how to do that. And I started to also research how do I make a book? I don't know. I don't like, I've never done this before. And I made so many mistakes along the way. I mean, I could, I could write a book on how to not make a book <laughs> because I made so many mistakes. And now looking back, I'm like, okay, I should have done this different. I should have done this different, but you know, hindsight's 2020. It was a learning experience. I'm glad I did it. And, um, yeah, so my husband, Miat, he was 
also very helpful in um, helping me kind of figure out a plan on how I wanted to launch things and made a uh, checklist and deadlines, which, you know, ADD, not so good with deadlines. So thank goodness for him. He's very patient with me. He would check in occasionally and be like, okay, how are things going? You know, we need, if you want to get this out by December 7th, we kind of need to like move along. I was like, okay, let's get it together. Let's make this happen. Thank you. All right, get it going. And um, so, yeah, we, we learned a lot along the way and we did, we self-published ourselves and um, it's been a really cool experience just creating and learning how to publish a book and make a book and the printing and um, the editing and uh, uploading to Amazon and using Ingram as our printer. And it's just been a really big learning experience for me and it's been really fun. I'm excited for the next book and yeah, it's been was, really cool. To, yeah. I was going to ask you, I'm like, I feel like there's a next book coming, but I want to stay with, stay with this book first. Yeah. <laughs> um, yes. Cause it's so, I feel like when you have an idea and you're creative and it, it is this, there's something I I've known from my own experience. Um, Cause I love to journal every single morning. And initially I did it for like a a mental health reason of just, I sit down. Well, actually it started off. Yeah. I'd sit down and I just like, write. Like when I clear, I clear everything or I just let whatever express wants to be expressed on the page. And um, the first few months when I did this, it was a lot of like, it was a lot of anger and hate and like not wanting to be here. Nothing that I was consciously thinking. It was really interesting to see what's just under the surface of like, what I'm just, wow. what's just bubbling under the surface. It's just what we're kind of picking up from around us. I don't know. I don't know what it is. I, I don't actually know, but just so much stuff. And, and it was confronting initially. And then it just had to feel really cathartic, but also one day it would be like hating myself, which I was not, again, not having any conscious thoughts. I've never, was never consciously saying I hate myself, but when I'd write, there was just all this hate and all this just bizarre stuff. Like, stuff that made no sense and it was really interesting because as I continued to write you know some days it would just be like this poetry that would pour out of me and then halfway through the poetry it would go back to like this hate stuff or like lost or not sure or someone help me someone save me literally those words and what it you know I've been doing this for a few years now and I'm just like sitting down every morning and I just let whatever come out comes out and sometimes it's really human and sometimes it's really ethereal but for me it it, um it was a really awesome practice of just like seeing the humanness like there's just so many flavors and textures of us that we want to box ourselves into just like one component but there's just so much going on here so it was like this really like physical way of seeing oh wow there's so much here to explore but for me the more that I did this practice the more that there's this um I like to call it the nothing, you know, into the nothing, this nothing part when I take myself back to this spacious, nothing feeling in my body where I'm like, there's no thought, there's no nothing. And I write, it writes from this really poetic, universal, sage like place. It is just pure wisdom. And I'd been doing this for a really long time because I love, I was just so curious. I'm like, who is this speaking through me? Because often the voice that spoke, that's, it comes from a we place so it wasn't me it's we and I was like this is just so fun who the fuck's talking like this is just so fascinating and I've been doing this for so long and um, recently I started to pull snippets out of these wisdom and, and start to put it in a google doc out of like my journal and create a book and instantly I felt like this it didn't even know it was sitting here but it was like stuck energy in my body of not actually expressing and putting it somewhere and then I've, you know, spoken to a, spoken to a publisher, just like, just to understand like, what, what's the process here? I have no idea. And I've sent it to my sister, who's a writer, just to look over it and, and edit it at some point. And I started to put it as blog posts on my website. And it's just, the reason I'm sharing this is just like the now putting it somewhere physical and it's going somewhere and channeling it somewhere. So it's not just for me and just sitting here. And the timing is just the timing, you know, it's happening when it should, but it feels like there was this stuck part in me that now it's like, I feel open and free. It was like, there was stagnant energy of just keeping it to myself and hiding this part of myself. And now that I'm starting to just share it and just be authentic. And 
I'm like, oh, is it too like cliche to share it online? Is it, you know, like these questions of, is it too like love and light? Is it too simple? And I've just fucking put those stories down. They just slowly are dissolving. The more that I just share this stuff, I'm like, I'm feeling so free. I'm feeling like it's all my authentic expression. And I just can't even imagine how you're feeling having it in a physical book that you've printed and that you're sharing this message. Like, is there a part of you that feels like it's like flying now? It's a, it's a bit bizarre. It's a bit surreal. And um, I just want to take a moment to say that it's beautiful what you are doing to write and to express and put it out there because that is so cathartic and healing. And I encourage everybody to do the same thing. If you can express what you're feeling and get it out, that is so vital. It's, it's unusually healing in a way that it's hard to even really comprehend until you actually put it in process. So yes, but, um, it's, yeah, it's just, it's a strange feeling. It's almost, it's a bit surreal for me. Um, I, I, it almost doesn't feel, yeah, it almost doesn't feel real. It feels a bit like a dream in a way. And I'm, I'm still kind of like digesting everything. Um, and I'm trying to prevent myself from going down that typical mindset that I always get in, which is like, I'm not deserving of this, or I, you know, I, fear of judgment, all those things. And I'm trying to like, actually just take a moment to enjoy and like, give myself some recognition for getting to where I am because it has been those thoughts that have kept me from getting to where I am. And I'm trying to keep those at bay because they still kind of come back up sometimes, you know, like those negative self beliefs sometimes rear their ugly heads again and want to say like, Oh, are you deserving of this? You know, is, is this really what you deserve? And, and so I'm trying to like keep that at bay, but it's, yeah, it's a very surreal feeling. It's a very surreal feeling, but I think it's, it's a cool thing. And like, if you have a desire to write a book, you should fucking do it, man. You should do it. Like there's people want to hear what you have to say. I want to hear what you have to say. I would read your book. I want to know, you know, I mean, if it's spreading any kind of like positivity or um, encouraging messages, you have to go for it. You got to put yourself out there. You got to take those limiting self-beliefs again, like what you were saying for yourself, worried about all these things. And you have to just kind of check those at the door and follow your intuition and follow your spirit. And um, there's this beautiful quote by Rumi, one of my favorite poets, reach higher, reach for your spirit. Mm -hmm. And that is what you have to do. You just have to keep reaching high and reaching for your spirit and where your spirit lies is where you need to go. And if you feel called to put a message out there, by all means, you need to do it and don't let those limiting self-beliefs hold you back at all. God, it's, um, yeah, that it's so, it's so many practices, I guess, in like self-development or caring for yourself like as you said unless you put it into practice you they just seem so cliche they just seem like another fluffy thing and then you actually do them and and uh, I love saying like the discipline creates the ease you know the discipline to to do it um to do the things as best you possibly can like it's going to be days where you just don't fucking feel like it and you just can't and it's too much and and then the next day that it's okay and then you just pick yourself back up and can you sit and just write or paint or yeah, just, just such medicine. And it's talking about the little book. What's the, like, what's the, I I know it's, it's spreading kindness, but can you, can you read a page to us or can you like, absolutely. So can you like tell us about it a little bit? Yeah. So this is the book and I'm not sure, is it coming in reverse on your side? No, it's perfect. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Great. So I, I am a mom on a mission to spread kindness and the book little miss mismatched is all about kindness self-expression radical self-expression which as you know is one of the 10 principles of burning man um inclusion diversity and self-esteem and there's i i can read you maybe a few pages in here i'll read you the the intro yeah which is the intro okay says 
Cheers to the wild ones, the weird ones. The with, one, your, with your mom juice, with your mom juice. With my, with my mom juice. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. To the, ones, to the ones that break the mold, the ones who make others live more authentically, the ones who bravely step out of the box, the ones who blaze the way, the ones who inspire, the ones who make magic around them, the ones who live life so fully, savor every moment and know that all we have is now. Cheers to the lone wolf souls, the wanderers, the creatives, the unique spirits. Cheers to the beauty that our world needs to grow. It's your energy that paves the way for change, healing, acceptance, understanding, compassion, unity, and love. Cheers to you. Cheers to the wild ones. <laughs> Cheers to you, Ashley. Yeah. Cheers to you. You are a wild one and you are just, you are so divine. Thank you. It's just, Thank um, you. yes, I, I'm just like, I've received such an, an extra permission slip today and it just, it so matters. It's, as you said, it's so matters that we follow our spirit and it's it's not easy because we live in a world where there's there's so much distraction and there's so many messages to say don't do that play it safe and it, it takes guts but it takes it takes women like you following your creativity following your gifts and creating this book the way that you have and I just want to say thank you so much and it's, um, I've got this quote up next to me that says, make room for your gifts and your gifts will make room for you. And that's exactly what you've done. Oh, thank you. you that just, is so beautiful. I yeah. appreciate that so much. So, so much. I'll, I'll read you the last little quote on the last page here, which is one of my favorites. And it says, talking about authenticity here, mm -hmm. when you are yourself, just totally you, you inspire others to be themselves too. Not everyone is meant to be just alike. It's your uniqueness that shines like a light. Always be you, even when it's tough, because you and you alone are always enough. Mm, I'm getting emotional. It's, you can never hear, it, it's, it, it can never be said enough. It can never be shared enough. And yeah. Just, I feel so, it's so special that we get to have this chat and talk about where you're at and where you've come from. And I feel like so many can listen to this and hear themselves in, in your story and, um, and just take that little step forward, whatever that is today. If it's journaling, if it's going to the art store and grabbing some paint, which is actually, Ted and I have a canvas that's like the size of a wall that we're doing a joint oh. painting together. Oh, have fun. You have to send me pictures. I, I will. I will. Yes. Yeah. I love that. It's, it's, yes. we're, not, we're not at your standard. I'm not going to lie, but it's a different oh, style. Listen, there's, there's no standard. Art is art. Art is just being creative and that's what it's about. So just put your creative cap on and like do your thing, girl. That's what it's about. Just doing it following the energy it just I think it's just like it's following the impulse hey and the breadcrumbs just keep revealing themselves don't they it's like you just follow the impulse yeah. and, the, and it just opens you up and then you just keep following it's like there's like a oh my god in my mind there's like a rainbow path and it's just like you take like the one step and then it opens up a bit more and then you just keep going and the energy shows you so where, it wants, where it wants to take you it's like I'll show you I just want to work through you if you just open yourself up to trust the nothing, which is your inspiration, which is your creativity, which is your life force, which is your spirit, which is your soul. It's just, it's like, let me show you, let me work through you. And um, yeah, you are letting love work through you. There's no doubt about it, Ashley. You are just, you are just yeah. so divine. And to think there's another book coming, of course there is, is so that's, that's happening. Have you? Yes, it's happening. It's in the works. I'm excited. It's going to happen. Um, yes, it's, it's going to be in line with the same uh, kind of ethos. I, I want to create books with conscious content. I want to create books that have purpose and meaning and can resonate with not only just the children that read them, but also the adults that read them to the kids too. Because I mean, this is, this is a message that I need to hear too about living authentically. And I feel like a lot of people do as well. So that's kind of like my mission is to eventually create a publishing company where we are just putting content out that is really conscious and uplifting our youth and uplifting the readers, whether they be young or old. So yes, I'm definitely going to be working on a second book and it's going to be 
little miss mismatched on her next journey and i uh, can't wait to share some more details eventually with you guys but yes it's in the works amazing and so i'm going to drop with this in the show notes and everything all of the details i'll drop the link to the book for anyone that wants to grab it for your little kids or any birthday presents or anything i think this book is um yeah it's just such a special gift to give and something special to have in the home for all of us not just the kids but us women adults too and so Ashley thank you so much for coming on into the nothing I so appreciate your time your energy and um you coming on with your mum juice and just just the gorgeous soul that you are thank you cheers, cheers. I love you <laughs> cheers to the wild ones cheers to the wild ones baby <laughs> that's right <laughs>